This is Kevin Collins with Home Theater Forum, continuing our series with uh, Blue Jean Cables, and we're talking here again today with Kurt. When, uh, one of the things when we came in was this, as Adam likes to refer to it, as the wallow cable. Uh, so this is kind of like everything that's not what we were talking about before, non-HDMI. Can you kind of take us through, you know, why so much cable? Well, there's uh, for one thing, as you can see, there are a lot of colors. Um, we have uh, a product like Belden 1694A. This is just a, a, a coax built for serial digital video use. Also happens to be really good for things like satellite antennas, high bandwidth coaxial applications. People like to have it in a lot of colors for patch panels or uh, for uh, just being able to keep track of which wire is which in a large installation. And so we carry uh, that in, in 10 different colors. But, uh, you know, as you go up and down the racks here, we've got a, a load of different things. There's RGB HV cable uh, back in the corner and uh, various kinds of component cable bundles. A number of these are RG59 versions of the 1694A, the 1505A. There's a plenum cable if you're doing a commercial installation and you've got a route uh, coax through uh, an area that's used as a ventilation return uh, without it, uh, it being flammable. Uh, you, can, uh, you can go to a plenum cable. We've got digital optical cable uh, here. This is Mitsubishi um, uh, plastic fiber. Balanced audio cable like Belden 1800F. Uh, and then we have a few proprietary things. This here is uh, what we call LC1. This is uh, made by Belden for us. It is a, uh, an analog audio cable, uh, very small center conductor, uh, foam dielectric, very heavy shield, so that it gives you for unbalanced audio uh, an ideal combination of uh, very low capacitance uh, to prevent high frequency roll off and uh, very high shield effectiveness at audio frequencies. And uh, we've just recently added in a bunch of data cables, so we've got Cat5 in a variety of colors, high flex coaxes, speaker cables, um, and uh, boy, it really adds up after a little while. You, you wind up needing a lot of spindles and a lot of spools. So one of the, you know, one of the key things on, on all the cables in the, in the non-digital part with HDMI is it, you, you terminate here. Yeah. Could you, um, could, I saw some really, you know, for being a blue jean cable, a small shop, I saw some really high-tech equipment in the back that, you know, A, would, you know, strip the cable, and B, would, you know, uh, terminate for a speaker cable. So would you be willing to take us on a tour of that? I'll take you on a, on a little walkthrough. Okay. Why don't we make ourselves a 10-foot subwoofer cable? Okay. So we've pulled ourselves a 10-foot subwoofer cable, and it's got no connectors on it. And uh, so down at this end of, of things, we come to some of our fancy equipment. This here is a uh, Schleiniger uh, coax stripper. This is the, uh, the big bruiser of the line. We have a number of these in smaller sizes as well. And what this essentially is is the, uh, the high-tech computer uh, programmed uh, version of little twisty tool that you would use uh, to terminate coax uh, at home. Uh, this thing is uh, programmed uh, with strip dimensions for uh, each of the cables that we strip in it. So in the case of LC1, I've got the uh, settings loaded, hit the foot pedal, and this barrel uh, turns and uh, does a complete three-level strip on the cable, pulling off uh, outer jacket, pulling off outer jacket and shield here, pulling off outer jacket, shield, and dielectric, for the center conductor. And uh, this gives us very high consistent uh, dimensional control and also doesn't uh, tend, as the hand tools will often do, to uh, give us uh, shredding of uh, shield and, and things like that. And we've got, of course, two ends to do, so I'll give that another go. These uh, machines are made in uh, Switzerland um, and uh, are a real delight to use because they give you a very, very high consistency. Over here we have a uh, pneumatic press uh, also from uh, Schleiniger in Switzerland and it uh, is responsible for applying a crimp to this cable. I've put a center pin onto this wire. Uh, actually that wants a little trim. And that goes into our uh, pneumatic crimp press. These are the same kinds of crimp dies you would use if you were doing this uh, with hand tools at home. 
but we get a very high pressure, very highly consistent crimp doing it this way, and it um, it comes down with uh, three tons of pressure, so it's uh, always going to get nice and tight. We assemble that plug, snap it into place, and there's a sleeve crimp, which goes right back into the press and dies, and voila, we have an RCA. Then this whole process gets repeated on the other end. Sometimes you get a little burr on the wire, which requires a trim. These are very nice machines to use because, uh, among other things, it helps you avoid repetitive stress injury, which is a real problem if you sit around with a crimp handle and, uh, and crunch, crunch, crunch all day. these connector boots and voila 10 foot subwoofer cable wow that's something that's a, a lot easier than uh, trying to do it yourself I, I know every time I try to uh, strip wire and try to crimp myself it it never uh, holds I did that for my uh, antenna that I drug through and I had to do the crimping uh, for my own just for my antenna wire for uh, over the air and Never have a good experience with that. Unfortunately, sometimes those hardware st store tools aren't very good in terms of crimp consistency, and a lot of a lot of the the crimp connectors that you'll see, uh, F connectors in particular, are kind of um, I think of them not so much as a crimp on as uh, as more of a crush on, and they uh, they really don't hold very well. Uh, for you know, if you're doing F connectors at home, what we typically recommend to people instead of this sort of thing, this uh, three part strip and and crimp. Uh, a lot of the compression connectors that are out there are pretty good, and you can buy a decent tool for doing compression uh, fittings at, uh, at Home Depot or something like that. When you get to RCAs and BNCs and things like that, and, and the dimensional uh, characteristics are a little more critical, there are compression connectors but, uh, but aren't quite as suitable, and this kind of three-level uh, strip and crimp is, uh, is really the ideal way to go about it problem is that if you're doing that at home with hand tools and you want the good stuff, you're into a few hundred dollars in tooling just to make a few cables. Uh, so, you know, by uh, being set up to, to do that custom work here, we're able to, to, uh, to do it uh, for people uh, for less money than they would spend doing it themselves. Now this is uh, just a, a run of conventional 10 gauge speaker cable. This is what we call our 10 white. Uh, not a very creative name, but uh, it's 10 gauge and it's white. So uh, there you go. Another Schleiniger machine here, just to uh, to give us a, a quick and clean wire strip. It's, uh, I always love these things. This uh, this fella goes into our ultrasonic welding machine. This is the banana plug which goes uh, onto this product, and as you can see, the banana doesn't have any method for attaching the wire at all. Um, you, you could, uh, I suppose, solder it in or something like that. But, uh, but what we do is put it into an ultrasonic weld process. This is a welder made by Sonobond, a company out in Westchester, Pennsylvania. And Sonobond um, introduced uh, ultrasonic welding into, uh, into a lot of different industrial applications. Uh, this is, to our knowledge, the only uh, the only welder currently being used uh, to terminate speaker cable. The wire goes in, just sits right there, and it's kind of a, a strange, magical process here. Weld head comes down, and there's kind of a little shriek from the machine. And what you'll notice here is if you uh, stick out your hand and uh, and touch that, it's not hot. Uh, the wire has fused completely into the banana plug. The pulse strength on this is extraordinary. I am just trying to destroy that with all my might, and it will not tear off of there. And what you've got is uh, a, a very, you know, low oxygen, high strength, uh, very durable weld. This uh, goes on, and uh, and you've got a uh, locking banana plug with a with a welded connection. And likewise for the other channel. What's the uh, cap for that you put on? The cap there is to deaden the ultrasonic because the um, 
if the uh, ultrasonic energy is uh, bouncing around loose in uh, the banana plug, it'll shear the uh, splines right off the front of the banana because there's just so doggone much energy flowing through that joint at the, uh, the moment of, of welding. So here we go again. Wire goes in. And that is all there is uh, to an ultrasonic right weld. And yeah, again, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, a little bit warm, but, uh, but welded basically at room temperature uh, for a very, very strong uh, attachment. That's pretty incredible. That's a, a far-fangled device. I have to bring my uh, cable down and have them terminated that way. And we can do that with uh, just about any cable. It takes a little bit of tweaking to uh, match up uh, to the wire gauge and get the right amount of energy into the weld. But, uh, but it's a very nice process and uh, gives us uh, something that's uh, truly unique in the home theater market. Well, great. Thanks for your time, Kurt. Thanks.